are joined today by J.R. Romano. J.R. Romano here, chairman of the Connecticut Republican Party. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and remember to subscribe and to share if you can. Uh, we are going to continue to talk about all of Connecticut's political hot topics, one of which is Anne Lamont's emails. For those that don't know, uh, Ned Lamont's wife got caught um, saying some demeaning and inappropriate things about people that oppose policies uh, that, that her husband is, is trying to push. Um, I think it's sad that uh, the First Lady of the State of Connecticut would demean and insult um, uh, someone who, Hillary Gunn, for those that don't know, is a is an, uh, no tolls activist. Um, she now famously was standing behind Ned Lamont when he was giving a press conference with a no tolls hat on. Um, and Anne Lamont referred to her as a crazy girl. A crazy girl. So demeaning in so many different ways. So to our first lady, what I would encourage you is to take an opportunity instead of writing a check, which I'm sure that because of your wealth, you have written lots of checks to charities and the, the Connecticut and, and the country's better off for it. So thank you for that. But how about spend some time? with a single mom in Meriden, Connecticut, and ask her what your husband's plan for tolls would do to her and her family. I bring this up all the time, and for anyone listening, I cannot stress this enough. I know we have a special election coming up in Fairfield, and it was brought to my attention that tolls has come up at the doors, and there are people that think, particularly in wealthy areas of state, and I'm not saying this as a, as a dig, but in the wealthy areas of state that may not understand fully the impact of taking... 800 to a thousand dollars a year out of someone's pocket who happens to be a single mom or a single parent struggling to make ends meet. And, and again, I, what I'm referring to is a teacher, a dental hygienist, you know, the, the, the people in our state that punch a clock every day making between 55 to 80 thousand dollars a year just trying to make it in the state because it's an expensive state. So when you're asking them to come up with another 800 dollars to a thousand dollars a year, That means maybe they can't pay off the credit card fast enough or get the new windows or get a new car. And to someone like Anne Lamont, she doesn't think about that. What she thinks about is like, well, we're going to tell you what's best for you. And yeah, you may, it may come out of your pocket, but we know what's best. And this is the saddest and scariest part of what's happened to the Democratic Party because we are seeing this at the federal level. We're seeing it at the state level. And what they're saying is, we know what's best for you. We are the moral we are the moral compass that you must obey. And therefore, anyone that disagrees with and it, whether it's impeachment to tolls, if you do not subscribe to everything that we tell you, you are crazy. You are unfit. You are a crackpot. And what's sad is that it's actually making things worse because people with and, and this is the, the part that Anne Lamont and, and all these limousine liberals don't understand is that the people that are rejecting their policies are the ones that know it won't help their family. When the Democrats were, were you know, sacking and stealing from the special transportation fund, remember the whole diverted? And we're going to get to Kathy Austin later. But when they were sacking the special transportation fund since 2012 to the tune of $2 billion, no one cared about the bridges then. No one cared about what it would mean for our infrastructure. Everyone sat on their hands and said nothing. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Democrats sat on their hands and said nothing and thought, what's the big deal? Well, here we are, and all of a sudden we have an emergency in transportation, according to some experts and I know Republicans is, have proposed several different uh, plans to uh, solve this crisis without tolls. But, of course, we can't have any other, anything other than tolls because at the end of the day, what everyone listening needs to understand, and when you're talking to your friends and neighbors over the holidays about tolls, toll, these tolls are not about solving the problem. Because if it was about solving the problem, Len Fasano's plan um, – the, his recent one about using some of this uh, rainy day fund. And, and what was great about Len's plan, he actually had a way to pay back the money over a course of time back into the, into the rainy day fund. But they also had the prioritized progress plan, which was a way to borrow money to shore up some of the, the infrastructure needs that are, that are immediate 
and deal with it then. But of course, the Democrats have rejected wholeheartedly both of those plans, mocking the fact that Republicans uh, used bonding or debt the way it was supposed to, which is for infrastructure, instead of, you know, of course, the Democrats vote to bond money for a splash pad in Hartford. That's okay, but wanting to bond money for a bridge somehow is grotesque to the Democratic Party here in the state of Connecticut. So when we're talking to our friends and neighbor, understand the Democrats don't actually want to solve the problem here, which is the infrastructure problem. What they want is a new revenue source. And that is the very reason and core at this toll issue. It is not about, so when you're talking to your friends and family, you know, remind them that this isn't, there are two other ways that we could have solved this problem. But the Democrats have rejected that. And it's all about creating another revenue source, which we all know and, and that it is not going to be a dedicated source of revenue towards tolls. It's going to be to a hundred other things, just like they've done in the past, right? They have not earned the trust of the people of the state to do with the money that they promised they're going to do because they never, ever, ever do. And that's the reality here is that for many of us, we recognize that this isn't about solving the infrastructure problem. This is about another revenue source. So when you're talking to your friends and neighbors who are in favor of tolls, I want everyone to realize the impact on those in the middle. That, that dental hygienist working in Mer- or living in Meriden and working in Hartford or living in Bristol and, and working in, in New Britain or w- whatever it may be, you're talking $800 to $1,000 a person. And this, these emails, and, and we have a couple of them. Obviously, there's the toll issue. There's another one where it involved this, the former, I think she was the former CEO of Pepsi, uh, who's very upset. Uh, there, was a, there was an issue when, when they were pushing the sugary tax. Um, and, Anne Lamont and Ned Lamont joked and, and made some very demeaning comments about stripping legislators of their health care because they disagreed with the policy. I mean, this is, this is the type of stuff that you're getting out of the governor's office. And, and you know what? I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked considering the, um, the fact that they have this um, ability, ability to not think in terms of finances. I mean, Ned Lamont walked into Harvard and his name was already on a library. So he has no idea what it's like for so many people in the state of Connecticut. And I don't think Ned's a bad guy. I just don't think he has that perspective. When, when you're the governor of the state of Connecticut, you shouldn't be using the words poppycock. Right? That, you know, this, is, this is kind of what we have here. You know, most people in the state of Connecticut wouldn't spend $30,000 to have their own Woodstock. I don't, I'm not even going to play the clip of him dancing because I can't, I, can't, I can't look at it again. I can't. But the point is, is that when you're that delusional and that disconnected from the everyday person, sending emails like this, it doesn't surprise me. It's disappointing, but I'm not shocked. I think, I think Anne Lamont owes the state an apology. I think specifically she owes uh, Hillary Gunn an apology, who, 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 by the way, happens, I think, live on their street. Well, that's the other thing, too. Um, you're so disconnected that you don't even realize that this, this young woman, I'm not going to call her a girl, this young woman lives on your street. And you're, you're asking a, a Greenwich Democrat to do some investigation on her. This, uh, this is, I mean, I, this could literally be out of a bad political movie who didn't actually ask anyone in politics for advice on the movie and just kind of wanted to have this fake script. That's what this reminds me of. It's like, it's like a dog and pony show up there. It's, it's completely insane. And speaking of insane... Um, we talk about like corruption and abuse of taxpayer money. Uh, we have two things going on in the state of Connecticut right now. One, and most recently, I'm just going to highlight uh, what's going on with the, the Sandy Hook uh, Relief Fund uh, for, for uh, first responders and how it was <laughs> bilked out of over $100,000 in taxpayer money. And, and I love it. And, and I have to give Themis, uh, Representative Themis Claire's credit. She's 100% right. The fact that the unions are like, we made a mistake, we'll put the money back. Well, you got caught. It's like, it's like robbing a bank and then getting caught and being like, oh, sorry, here, we're going to give you the money back. Don't, don't punish us. That's literally what's happening here. Um, and I, I hope that on the heels of the, our next topic, that the governor and the legislature, in a bipartisan fashion, hold these, these organizations accountable when you're dealing with taxpayer dollars. Because what we've learned based on this whole issue with the Port Authority, and this is the next topic with Scott Bates, who's been in hiding. I think he's been touring the country with Hunter Biden, right? Ducking reporters, dunk, ducking, having conversations about corruption. Scott Bates was the charge of the Port Authority 
when it when he basically allowed it to be used as a piggy bank by friends and family. Um, there were overpaying of art things. I mean, it was just it's egregious. And and here's my favorite part about this whole atrocity. They're literally claiming, and I'm going to play the clip of of Kathy Austin defending Scott Bates. Um, I think that uh, in order to staff up a quasi to get it up and running, I think that we should take care of the basic skeleton of an organization first. Okay, thank you. And I just wanted to comment in relation to what you're saying, because, you know, I I certainly um, agree to an extent. It's not just because I think what the auditor's findings are, it's not just that it's more people, that it's more money. It's how those people were brought on. It's how that money was spent that is the question. So whether there's 10 staffers in a budget of $5 million or there's three staffers in a budget of a million dollars, the issues that the auditors raised were about the how things were done. And I think we shouldn't lose sight of that particular aspect. And some of these aren't just do's and don'ts from an auditor's perspective, they're ethical common sense or, or, or use of good judgment in certain situations. Thank you. Okay. Uh they're claiming that there were no protocols put in a place to follow. So, uh, and this is the most disturbing and disgusting things that Democrats are rallying behind. And, and, and Mark, Scott Bates is someone who's run, run uh, I think he ran either for state rep or state senate, as a Democrat. He's a loyal party guy, which is why he still has a job, by the way, in the Secretary of State's office. He's the Deputy Secretary of State. And when you look at the, 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 the complete lack of oversight that uh, under his charge, it is scary that now he is the deputy secretary of state in, in charge of anything that has to do with taxpayer dollars. But Kathy Austin defends his excuse, which was, I didn't have a handbook. It's almost like, I, I, I mean, it, it's like I, I didn't realize paying too much money for artwork from a family friend is unethical. Uh, listen, man, I'm sorry. You got caught is what happened. Scott Bates and, and the Democrats that were in charge of that Port Authority got caught using it as a way to pad the pockets of their friends and family. Fact. Their, al their political allies got taken care of with contracts. Fact. And now they're going to claim, well, we didn't know that was, that was wrong. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We have, there's more evidence of the corruption within the Port Authority than there is in what's going on in Washington, D.C. There is more evidence of corruption in the Port Authority than there's evidence in regards to what's happening in Washington, D.C. That is a fact. And, and guess what? Kathy Austin defends Scott Bates, defends this idea that there was no protocols or provision, and that's why corruption happened, and that's why this, the, these contracts were handed out. Are you kidding me? And Ned Lamont's been completely silent out saying, saying that Scott Bates is a good guy. This is the Democratic Party. They do not care about what it means for your family when you pay taxes and when they abuse that. They don't care about rules. They don't care. They, what they care about is power. That's what you're seeing in, in Washington, D.C., and that's what you're seeing in Hartford. All they care about is maintaining power from the Democrat standpoint. That's it. It's not about your family. It's not about protecting you or trying to make your lives better. That's not what it's about. It's about keeping them in power, and by that I mean in power of the purse strings because taxpayer money – Oh, it's not their money. So a little goes missing here, a little goes missing here. Uh, what's the big deal? That's exactly how they're treating this, this issue with the Sandy Hook um, relief fund, and that's exactly how they're treating this Port Authority fund. It is sad and disgusting. And I hope, I, particularly with Kathy Austin's this idea that she just lost an election for first selectman, and the fact that she's out here defending someone who abused his power and wasted taxpayer money on friends and family. And he, she defends him. I hope, I hope her senatorial district holds her accountable to that because that Senate district has been, they have, they have been hurt by the tax increases Kathy Austin has been pushing on them. Three, and let's not forget all the other policies that have been actually hurtful to businesses and the community that she supposedly represents. Sounds to me more she represents special interest and her party before the people. That's how I look at it and that's how I see it. Um... 
The other thing I just want to touch on, I, I, there was a story that the, the Connecticut Post did about you know, the, the direction of the party and this whole concept of moderates and conservatives. Is there a place in the party for moderates? And you know what bothers me about this? I, I actually challenge the reporter to define what he means when he says moderate. And he couldn't. He, he, didn't, he couldn't even understand what I was saying because if we're going to have a conversation about policies, let's have a conversation. What did he mean? And here's what bothered me the most. And what I, what I believe to be true, and I know everyone listening to believe to be true, is the left has gone so crazy, so far to being the Communist Party, to socialists, to, to fight against the rule of law, that anything seems extreme in the opposite direction of what the left believes. And what I mean when I say that is to stand for the flag now somehow is conservative. To believe in the Constitution now all of a sudden is conservative. It's not. This is exactly why the Democrats ha are having, um, uh, when it comes to uh, the, um, the, the approval of this impeachment process, they're in the tank. They, they, they know they can't beat Donald Trump at the ballot box, so they're, they're, they're trying to create a narrative. that, it, it, and, and, it's, and mainly it's because the, the average American, the average person punching a clock every day, the average person... Uh, uh, who, who's just trying to feed their family, just trying to get through the day, is tired of hearing this, this uh, constant outrage from the left. And so anyone that sit here, like you literally have elected Democrats that are working against ICE. And for those that don't know, ICE is one of the leading investigators and uh, in terms of child trafficking. And they are standing in ICE's way and these are the types of things they, they, they are, I, I can't, you, kneeling for the flag. Look, I understand it's free speech. I, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of free speech. But when you stand here and tell me that the country that we live in isn't a great country, and you tell me, and every country's got its problems. But when you tell me that somehow America is wrong, that, that, is, that to me is what it means. At this point, being this this American and standing for the virtues and values that are in the document. Have we always gotten it right? No. Ha, is, is our history filled with problems? Absolutely. Every nation is. But in terms of our lifespan, in terms of the fact of, of a nation, we are still relatively young. And all that we've been able to accomplish as a country because of the spirit and the people that are here, I'm not going to turn the back on our history. I'm not going to deny the, the, the bad stuff. But you learn from it. And what's happened within the Democratic Party, because they're obsessed with power, they don't care about process, they don't care about the Constitution, they don't care about the rule of law, they'll go after anybody if it means they stay in power. And that is what you're seeing in Hartford, and that is what, are you, what you're seeing in Washington, D.C. So, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end on a positive note. I want to wish everybody uh, a happy holidays through this, this Christmas season. Uh, and, I um, I'm very happy to uh, to have received the Christmas Christmas ornament um, from the White House Historical Association. I highly recommend uh, going to the website and and purchasing one simply because it is in honor of Sikorsky's. Um, it's a great ornament. Uh, it's a it's a little helicopter, and again, it's the uh, White House Historical Association. It's their annual ornament. It's pretty cool. Anyway, J.R. Romano, Chairman of the Connecticut Republican Party. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe and share. 